Hey guys, welcome back to the rating climb. We're gonna try to get to 1375, and I'm playing D4 because somebody had requested the Kali system, and so I'm not gonna actually attempt to play that. I was looking at some very basic stuff about it. So Kali system, wow, this was not the move that I really wanted to see, to be honest with you guys. Uh, the Kali system is kind of like the London where you put your pawns like this, and you can play it like this with the, the pyramid. You can also play b3, which is what I was going to do. The difference is that instead of your bishop being out here on f4, it stays back and usually can go over like this. The issue with bishop to f5 is that I wanted to put my bishop here, but black is not letting me do that. Uh, now, of course, I can still go there and it's just a trade, but that's not really ideal. Like Generally speaking, this is considered a good bishop for white. This is kind of not a good bishop for for black and so trading that off I think kind of helps black a little bit so I might just change the strategy unfortunately I really was hoping to get bishop d3 in right away um, but obviously as you can see that didn't happen so what I'm going to do instead is play c4 and the reason is I want to use my queen to try to attack this pawn because that's kind of the downside you might say from what black is doing here is that this is a weakness now knight to b4 I have to be careful here um, knights don't move like that. I have to be careful here because of this, right? So let's think through this a little bit. We could go with the queen to b3 move. It does stop that. It does put pressure there and attack the pawn. If they take, I could take with the bishop and I have a little threat here. So that actually looks pretty good. So I think I will still play queen to b3, but you just want to think through those things. <coughs> So let's play queen to b3 here. And I did severely sprain my ankle a couple of days ago. So that's why there's crutches back there. Uh, it was weird. I sprained it at like night. And I didn't think it was that bad until the next morning I woke up. Couldn't put any weight on my foot at all. It's like super painful. And it's been totally swollen for the past couple of days. So went to the ER, went to the doctor. Knight to a5. Okay, I did think about this move, and I was thinking it wasn't going to be very good because of, like, queen to a4. So the, the thing about queen to a4 is that black's probably going to have to play c6 to defend their knight that way. But then I'm wondering, can we can we take advantage of the, way, the, uh, the placement of the knight there? So let's think about this. If, let's say c6 happens. Something like b4, the knight doesn't really have a lot of places to go, but it can capture here. So that's kind of the only move that I'm concerned about. So I wonder if we could even play like c5 with the idea of maybe even just bishop d2 or something to attack the knight afterwards. Probably this has to be the move that I'm going to play, though. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of other moves that make sense. Like, I don't want to just go back, obviously, and allow this. I don't, I mean, I can't take that. I where else can I go? So I think I will have to play queen to a4 check. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. I'm still not sure what my follow-up is going to be. Ah, black just goes knight to c6. Interesting. So that seems like a wasted move for black, because it seems like I got this move for free, essentially, right? Like, I, you know, they played knight c6. I could have played queen a4. It would have been black's turn. But now we have the same position, and it's my turn. So the question is, how can we make use of this? Well, uh... Capturing here looks pretty obvious because once the queen takes, we can gain a tempo with knight to c3 and then maybe even think about moves like e4, bishop b5. I'm just looking briefly if there's any other moves that make sense. That looks like the most logical here, right? We take, we bring the, the knight out, and we're just gaining some tempos on black's pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go knight to c3. And I'm feeling pretty good about our position. All right, queen to d7. So the first move that comes to mind is bishop to b5, trying to take advantage of the, the pin here. I'm not even concerned about a6 because that's not really a threat because the rook is still hanging. And once I get the bishop there, we're threatening d5. 
Could also play d5 immediately. Let's just say the knight moves here and then play bishop to b5. But then we have to worry about c6. We take, black takes. It looks like black's able to defend there. But I think we want to play bishop to b5 first. e4 also looks like an interesting move. But I think I really just want to focus on this right now. And so I'm thinking bishop to b5. Now, e6 would stop d5 temporarily, but then maybe we play e4 and d5. Yeah, that seems like it's probably the way to go. So let me just make sure there's no tactics or anything weird happening if I play bishop b5. I don't see it. Let's go ahead and play it. <clears throat> so um, definitely e4. Forcing the bishop to move. And then let's say it goes back here, most, most likely. d5. And how is black going to deal with this pin? Because if they take, I simply take. And I don't see how black's going to do. I mean, yes, they can throw in a check. I don't really care. I could block with either of these pieces. And they still kind of have that problem of their knight. So it just looks like a simple tactic to me. Um, just going to verify that there's nothing I'm missing. I don't believe so. So let's go ahead and play e4. And we'll follow it up with d5. Again, just quick verification that I'm not missing anything. Takes, takes. It's defended. Um, back, I can block. Yeah, I don't really see much that concerns me. Go with d5. Thanks for these videos. They're amazing. Are you planning to play subscribers in the rating range at any point? Probably not, only because I don't have a set time when I always play uh, these these games so I just kind of hop on whenever I can so it kind of makes scheduling difficult to try to play against certain people so probably not a good question all right so here we go this is kind of what I was talking about check but we already looked at this we have two options which one is better both look pretty good I think I'm going to go with the knight only because then it allows me to castle over here right away I could play bishop e3 and castle this way but that's not as a safe my king's not going to be as safe there so I'm pretty sure this is the move I want to play yeah so let's go ahead and do that and castle here but of course we have the immediate threat here okay that doesn't really help black I mean I can take it and I'm still going to get the knight or I can even just leave it alone and take the knight right away and allow black to take me, which is what I think I'm going to do, because I don't want to develop a piece for them if I don't have to. So I think we just take the free piece here. We could even take with the bishop and then take with the queen and get a fork. It also looks pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, so I think maybe I will allow the queen trade. Eh, I don't know. They both look so good. Which, which way do I want to do this? Just because I'm getting lower on time, I'm just going to go ahead and, and grab the pawn. I mean, grab the knight and, and allow the queen trade if that's what black wants to do. Yeah. Um, maybe it was better to actually take with the bishop and go for the fork. I, I'm just not sure. All right, let's go ahead and castle. I'm going to speed up a little bit. I think we've kind of gotten out of the super tricky position there we have an extra piece and I since I am getting a little bit lower on time rather than waiting till I'm down to like 30 seconds you know let's just move a little bit faster <clears throat> okay let's just develop this bishop somewhere we'll put it on e3 seems like a good square okay um, let's get out of this pin so we'll bring the rook over and of course this knight is defended so I'm not worried about that Okay, I see a way to force a trade since I am ahead. I think I will. Actually, I could trade a bunch of stuff. And do I want to do that? Oh, we'll go ahead and start with the bishop trade. So I'm trapping the bishop there, and it's going to probably be forced to take me. There you go. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, I don't know what was happening there, but that's, that's it. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. Game review. <clears throat> 89 so we did make a couple of mistakes so let's see what our mistakes were I'm curious I was thrown off a little bit I, I had planned on going into the Kali 
uh, you know, bishop d3, knight f3, and we're going to see how that works. But on bishop f5, kind of didn't really have that option. So let's see with c4. Yeah, c4 was a good move. Queen b3, interesting. Let me go over here. I'm going to check the analysis button. C takes d5 was what the engine wanted. And then probably knight c3. Okay. And then the queen moves. And then there's bishop d2. Interesting. And it said that that was better than queen b3. I wonder what black's best response was here. Just playing e6. And apparently there must be a little trap here on knight to b4. Or maybe not a trap, but it's a it's a very nice threat for black. Yeah. So that's why I couldn't actually get away with hunting that pawn. Okay. That's what that's what I missed. Now, lucky for us, our opponent didn't, you know, do that. We didn't have to worry about that. We ended up getting it into a nice position here. But Yep, and then we were just winning at that point. Okay. All right, let's play another game. And playing a 1390. Let's play e5. Ah, King's Gambit. So, in my opinion, the King's Gambit, always, always just play d5. Just always play d5. This is like the best way to respond to the King's Gambit. And it's called the Falkbeer Counter Gambit. But what you're doing is basically saying, look, you're opening up your king over here. You're, you're going to try to attack me on the king side. I'm just going to bust open the center right away. Get both of my bishops out. And it's just a very, uh, you know, tough move to, to deal with as a white. And I know this because I used to play the King's Gambit. And the only move that I hated to see was d5. Whenever I played the King's Gambit, I'm like, oh, no, not, not another... You know d5 so i mean simple thing here is we can go ahead and trade the queens and white loses castling rights which i'm happy with and then we can just boom 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 castle queenside bring the rook in i'm pretty happy with that so i'm going to go ahead and take it trade the queens and already i feel like you know the opening was a success for us <coughs> <coughs> I wonder if white is not going to take the pawn. Oh, they do. All right. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, like I mentioned, is knight to c6. And I really want to get both of these pieces out right away because once I castle queenside, then bam, my rook is very active and looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and play knight to c6. It also defends my pawn, which is nice as well. Now, I don't have to take it right away. We can just go on the offensive here with check and castle and queenside, which might be what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think it is. I'm gonna just and basically what I'm saying is, look, the king is there. I'm getting ready to castle. And I, of course, I can take this back at any moment, and I'll be fine. All these moves happen with tempo, right? A check and a check. So white doesn't really have time to do much. So let's go ahead. Here we go. And you can see how these three pieces now are going to be very dangerous to white's king. Even though queens are off the board, you can still attack your opponent's king this way. All right, so now is probably the time to take to defend this guy. And the reason I'm going to take here as opposed to trading is because if I trade, I'm developing this piece for my opponent, right? Whereas if I take here, if they take me, then I'm bringing a piece into the attack and they still have a knight sitting back here on g1, okay? So it's a subtle thing, but it, it makes a big difference a lot of times, these, these kind of decisions, right? On who gets their pieces out quicker, who can start attacking faster, these little decisions uh, go a long way. So that's what we're doing here. I'd like to play knight f6 and bring this bishop probably to c5 as well. Okay, so they do take. And here you can see what I'm talking about. Immediately, we are the one who has the threat, and white is now on the defensive. They do defend, which is probably a good move. Now we also have a check here. And this is pinned. And you can see already the rook playing a, playing a role here. So that looks like a pretty good move. The king can't go here. We get a fork. Could go here, but I'm still going to take that and win the rook, which means white is forced to go here. We grab a pawn. Maybe rook g1. Can we move our knight somewhere? We can still get our knight away. So I can definitely snag that if I want. Or I can simply develop and keep attacking. And both options look pretty good. I'm trying to think what 
what is white most likely to do next? Probably knight to c3. So if I play bishop c5 and knight to c3 happens, you could still do this at that point, or even bishop to e3, piling up on that pinned bishop, which looks even better. So here's a, here's a situation where I think a lot of people, if they saw this, they would just immediately go grab a pawn, which is not bad. But I'm going to say this pin and active pieces and just kind of saving that threat for maybe later, I'm going to say that's more valuable. And I'm going to play the move bishop c5. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that would be fine. And I would just be up a pawn and I'm happy. But um, I, I just have a feeling this is going to work out better for us. So that's what we're doing here. So c3, interesting move. We can still play this and win the pawn. So that didn't go anywhere. We can also play bishop here, which basically leaves white's knight stuck to defend that. Or we can wait till they maybe move the knight and then try to jump in and take that. Now it looks like white maybe is trying to go here, which is probably a good decision for their king. So what about a move like knight to f6? Backing this guy. And if let's just say they push, then we could jump in and we've got pressure there. The king might go to c2. And I guess we could take and then we could jump in with the knight. So that looks pretty good as well. Again, do I want to take a pawn or I want to just keep bringing out pieces and attacking? Um, they both look pretty good. I think now maybe is the time I'm going to grab the pawn though. Just because it looks like white's going to try to go there anyway. That stops that. And I get the pawn and then I can just continue after that. Also, the nice thing about throwing in this bishop c5 move is once my knight lands here, I don't have to worry about rook to g1 and attacking my knight like this. So with all that being thought about, let's go ahead and play knight to e3 and grab the pawn now. <coughs> hmm. And keep in mind, queens have been traded. So we are a little bit closer to the end of the game. So, you know, grabbing free pawns is is a good good thing. If I'm able to trade some of these pieces off, we go into an end game and I have an extra pawn or two, probably going to be a pretty easy win. So, you know, if queens were on the board and I'm just trying to attack the king, that's a different story. But um, pawn is a pawn. And since I didn't see anything else immediately obvious, I think it's a good time to take this. Okay, so here we see um, another kind of obvious mistake. It's it's not like a blunder, but it's a pretty basic tactic. We can grab this, and then we have a follow-up fork. So, you know, I've said it before, 13, 1400s are still going to make these mistakes. You got to be ready, though. This could be an easy one to miss. You think, oh, it's defended. I don't want to take that. Let me do something else. Maybe you want to trade. You go here, whatever. But... You know, working on those tactics is important, and uh, we can just see we, we just want a piece here. So, <clears throat> all right. So at this point, I'm going to finish developing. I don't see any immediate target. Actually, I do see an immediate target. Never mind. Rook to d2 check is an idea. Grab a pawn. Force the king somewhere. I do kind of like the look of that while I can, because white's going to go here next move. I'm not going to be able to. So I think I will go ahead. Whenever you can get a rook on the second rank, it's usually a pretty good sign. We'll put that guy there, and now it's probably time to continue developing. I mean, yes, I could grab the pawn and probably be fine as well. Just trying to see, does white have any way to attack me or create, you know, counterplay. I don't really see much. I probably can just grab this guy and be totally fine. I think I will. Sometimes you want to be careful before you've finished your development. But in this particular position, yeah, I mean, I don't see any way for white to really do anything. Like, I'm already defending this. Um, and so I think it was safe to do that. 
But let's go ahead and now finish our development. We can bring this rook over and trade some more pieces off. And even just start pushing this pawn might be a pretty simple plan as well. So I can grab that if I want, set up a potential fork. Um, but I think I'm just gonna just gonna try to trade some pieces off, make it make it simple, make it simple and easy. <coughs> Okay, what I like to do um, when I have some extra pawns like this is just defend my pieces with the pawns, especially in ways like this where everything is defended. It makes it difficult for black to, to do anything, right? Because everything is just defended. So I think that's totally fine. All right, let's see. What if we bring the other rook down and start to maybe attack the king a little bit? Let's go ahead and do that. There is knight c4, but we can just move and then play b5, chase it away, and I think, you know, white's going to have a hard time dealing with this threat. e5. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this with check, and I'll, I'll move my knight in a second, but I want to go ahead and grab that pawn while I can. And depending on where the king goes, uh, may, will determine most likely where I move my knight to. I'm guessing it's going to go here, yeah. And I think... I'm just going to go here uh, with the idea of having this or this that looks pretty good. Just kind of scanning, making sure I'm not blundering anything. You do want to pay attention to moves like this, but I could simply take it and I would have time to react to this threat. <coughs> All right, so I think um, let's go ahead and trade that off. I do want to be careful, right? This is how you could lose this game. You don't pay attention to this, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure we do something that deals with that. Um, so let's see, maybe knight here. Actually, it's a fork, and if they take, we can escape with our king. Looks very good. If they don't take, we simply win a rook. All right, there you go. Hmm. Gonna run out of time? No, I don't think so. Game's about to be over. It's almost over. White's running out of pieces and, and running out of threats. And, you know, as the game gets more and more simplified, it becomes easier and easier to play faster and faster. So two, two minutes is a long time uh, when you're at the end of the game and, you know, your opponent doesn't have very many pieces. <clears throat> What's up with the crutches? Yeah, so I severely sprained my ankle and I have to wear those now. All right, so we can take this. Uh, that's not checkmate because I can move my king. Now, maybe white's going to try to go here. No, they can't go there. Yeah, th there's no really way to set up a checkmate. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, you do want to, you know, be careful and make sure that there's no checkmate. But I'm seeing that it's, it's fine. But we'll take the rook. Okay, and our opponent does resign. So, check the game review. <coughs> Quickly. Yeah, 93, so we played pretty well. And, yeah, D5. I mean, if somebody plays a King's Gambit, just play D5. And there's actually a trap here. If they take this way, they just lose immediately because of the check. And then, bam, you hit him with a fork. So a lot of lower rated players will, will play that. The higher rated players who know not to take this way will usually take this way. And you have two ways you can play this that are both pretty nice. Option number one is you could push this pawn. It's kind of annoying because it takes away the, the square from the knight, which is really where the knight wants to go. And then you just develop, you know, you bring your knight out, you eventually take this back, you bring your pieces out, you castle. The other way is you could play c6. I forget the name of this. This is like a different gambit. And the point is if they take, you just take and you kind of just try to play aggressively. And a lot of fun for black. 
I like it because, you know, white usually tries to play aggressively when they play the king's gambit, but when you play this counter gambit, you're actually the one who gets to do all the attacking, which is pretty nice. But anyway, d3, I don't think it causes us too much of a problem. We saw how after we just took here and just simply developed quickly, you know, when you can castle and get your rook involved, what is this, move, move seven, and already our rook is starting to attack the king, that usually opens up tactics for you. And that's kind of what we saw here, you know, all of a sudden we have these ideas. Let's see, what did Stockfish say the best move was? It wanted the knight to come out first. Interesting. But it did agree with me in the sense that it was saying, you know, it wasn't worth it to go grabbing that pawn right away. And let's see what, what did the engine say was going to happen. The rook was going to go to f1 and start attacking stuff. Yeah, just not quite as good as getting those pieces out right away. Okay, let's play another game. I'm going to try to get to 1375, which might be one more game. And then I have to go uh, have lunch, assuming I can make it to the kitchen on my crutches. Let's play d4. And <clears throat> we'll see if we can play the Kali the way that I was going to try to show you guys. Hopefully we don't see bishop f5 here. All right. Ooh, e5. Wow. Getting all these crazy moves. Like, it's just surprising. It's just, surpri it's just surprising. Well, you kind of got to take this pawn. And the reason is, if I were to play anything else... Knight f3 or bishop d3 like I was going to. Black's going to shove this pawn forward. And it's really annoying for us. And that's not what we're going for. So I think I do have to take this. Unfortunately, whoever requested to see the Kali um, is not going to get to see it. Because this is not the typical Kali setup. But you, that's one thing about chess, right? You can't go into the game saying, I'm going to play this opening no matter what. I don't care what my opponent does. I'm just going to play it. That's not going to end well for you, right? You have to be able to adapt. And if they play some crazy stuff, you have to like think through, okay, what's what's the best thing to do? And I think here we just have to take it. And it's a free pawn, right? Not only is it a free pawn, like I mentioned, you, we can't allow that, that guy to come forward and just disrupt our development. So I don't know what opening we're playing any, anymore, but here we go. All right. Um... Let's go ahead and play knight to f3. It's a developing move. It also bends the pawn. Right? Makes sense. They want to take this. So we could play bishop e2, but we don't actually defend our pawn because they could simply take, we take, and then they take it back. Now, at the end of that, we do have this guy, which would be a target, so it kind of does defend the pawn. The other option is just to go bishop to b5 and defend it that way. Um... I guess even another option, knight to c3, and just sort of try to counterattack. Which one's better? I don't actually know. I kind of like, kind of like the look of this. You know, if they want to give this up and give me that pressure on, and that's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So, okay. We could take the pawn either way, bishop or the queen. Uh, if we take with the queen, they could throw in this trade, but we can always recapture with the queen, and we don't lose our queen here. We're just up a pawn. We take this way. I don't think I like that quite as much. Because then after like c6, we have to move. Black can trade queens. We lose castling rights. Um, and so I think with that in mind, I will take with the queen. And I'm of course, I'm happy with the queen trade because I have the extra pawn, right? So if we go into an endgame, I'm going to be um, ahead. By the way, I, I want to mention something that I'm seeing in like pretty much every game that we've played this stream, I think. Our opponents are playing like they're playing a bullet game, or at least like a fast blitz game, right? Like it's a 10 minute game. You don't have to play every move in like two seconds. Like my opponents played one second, two seconds, two seconds. Yeah, like basically every move um, is about two or three seconds. They're just playing so fast. So I think that's why we're seeing some of these, you know, pretty big mistakes too. Some of these players are probably capable of seeing some of this stuff. They're just like blitzing out these moves. So it's a free pawn. Um, question is, do I want to take it? I would be threatening the rook. So I'm expecting rook to be eight. And then we could jump in with the bishop with check. It's kind of a tricky position because if they just slide over, I do have two pieces being attacked. And I might get into trouble after I go here. Yeah, rook to b6. It's like we might actually lose a piece. And if we get really greedy and grab both pawns, 
yeah, I'm not, I think that's just too greedy. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. So probably, I mean, it's tempting. I am thinking about it, but no, I think, I think what I want to do is just develop my pieces. So now the question is, how do we want to develop them? Because probably what black's going to do is play knight to f6. And they're actually getting some pretty quick development. So I want to be a little careful here with my next couple of moves. That's for sure. I think I might want to play knight to d2. So that if this ever happens, I can take back with the knight. Because I want a castle, but I don't want to have to take this way and expose my king. And I'm in expecting my queen's going to get kicked around somehow, right, with, with some move. So with all that in mind, I think I might do this. Land's going to be a castle. And we'll fix our bad bishop problem maybe by playing b3 and bishop b2 at some point. So uh, that's the idea. I think that looks good. I think that's a nice safe way to approach the position. And let's play knight to d2. This is actually pretty common. This happens a lot in positions like this where you're up a pawn is you waste some time grabbing that extra pawn. And if your opponent kind of turns it into a gambit, you have to be, you know, you're going to be a little bit behind in your development. So <clears throat> again, we have the question of, do I want to do that? Rook to b8. Yeah, it's the same, same kind of story. I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Stockfish might say it's the best move because Stockfish is, you know, Stockfish, but... As a human, I think a much safer move is going to be something like queen to b3. Safer and, and easier to play, right? I think I'm going to win more games in the long run playing a move like this than I am getting greedy and, and going for that little pawn over there. Okay, so black is castle. I think it's time for me to castle as well. I'm just kind of thinking through. Is there anything else I want to play? But I don't think so. I think I want to get the king out of the center. And... One thing that I'm keeping an eye on is it kind of looks like, okay, well, I was going to say it kind of looked like black might have been able to generate some sort of an attack if they maybe brought one of those knights forward. But if they're just going to trade off, I'm pretty happy. And actually, this knight does a great job of defending my king. Yeah, now we can see that. So here we go. Um, probably I'm just going to play h3. Like, why leave that sit there when h3 is kind of a useful move, right? It, uh, you know, it, at the end of the game later on, I don't have to get back rank checkmated, but right now I get rid of that annoying knight and I'm defended because of my knight on f3. So let's just check. No crazy tactics or anything. I don't think so. And we'll play h3. Okay. Again, the pawn is there, but do I really want to allow this? It's probably fine, but I think what I would rather do instead is finish my development. And I had said about playing b3, but that's kind of slow because my queen's in the way. So I have to move my queen, then I have to play b3, then I'm going to take a lot of moves. Seems like it might be simpler to either just play e4 or go like this. Yeah, I think I like that. So bishop to d2. Notice I'm paying attention to the queen, right? But it's defended by the knight. So I'm not worried about some tactics with the bishop or whatever where the queen comes down. I'm not worried about it. So let's go bishop to d2. And we're going to put the bishop here, which is a nice active square, controlling all of these squares. And then we're going to use the D file to uh, put a rook here, probably. Okay, so black's going to try to come over here. So let's kind of pay attention. But I don't see any immediate threats. Even if they go here, what are they attacking? They're not going to take this. The knight can't really go anywhere. I mean, you can go here, but that's not much. So uh, I will play bishop to c3. Okay, as kind of as expected. So again, let's just think carefully. Um, maybe a queen and bishop checkmate here. We've got it covered with the knight. Maybe a knight would have to land here or here to attack this, but it can't. I would take it. I would take it. Um, don't really see anything else unless a rook gets involved, but I don't think that white, or I'm sorry, black really has time for that. I think I'm fine. So let's go ahead and bring my rook to the open file. And I am going to be looking for ways to potentially start trading some stuff off. And maybe even now I'm going to start thinking about taking this pawn. Because now I've kind of got my pieces where I want them. And yeah, maybe maybe now's the time. Maybe we take it now. So notice how I finished my development. I brought my rook to a nice square. And only then 
Am I comfortable grabbing these pawns? <clears throat> okay, the knight's trying to come in. I just don't, again, I don't see really where it's, where it's going. So, um, I think we're just fine. One thing that I could do is play king to h1 if I want to get out of this pin, but I don't really see the reason to do that at this moment. So um, I'm going to play rook to e1. And what I'm doing is thinking about now pushing this pawn forward like this. I think that's going to be pretty annoying for black to deal with, because once I get it to e5, it, the bishop, which is kind of a strong bishop, has to, has to leave. Okay. Yeah, so let's see, e4, where's the knight going to go? I don't know, but e5 looks good. So I'm keeping an eye on the time. I don't want to get too low. So I'm, I'm mostly scanning for blunders. I don't see anything. Let's go ahead and follow through with the plan. e5 is going to be my follow-up move, most likely. Expecting knight to e7. I don't see where else the knight can go. Or back to h6, I guess. All right, so let's see, e5, we've got it well defended. Let's go ahead. Hmm. And so let's say bishop c5, I'm going to start kind of thinking through what am I going to play against that. I think bishop d4, maybe bishop b4, trying to force a trade essentially. Yeah, I think bishop to d4. I don't want to allow any shenanigans with the queen coming here and grabbing on f2. So because of that, I'm going to go this way. So, okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and take... Take with the knight to put pressure on the rook. And I'm looking for ways to simplify the game. That's what I would like to do. So trading off some of these pieces. Okay, so that seems like a blunder, blundering the rook. Yes, there is a threat, but notice my queen sitting over here. It's defended. I'm, I'm actually okay with that. So let's take this. And let's see if we can figure out a way to defend with the rook and also create some threats. So yeah, rook to d3 looks pretty good. I'm anticipating knight to h4, and I'm going to meet it with rook to g3. If not, okay, well, there you go. So here we go, rook to g3. And we're just over defending everything, which is a nice thing to do when you're low on time. I'm going to have to go pretty quick now, so I'm going to just probably stop talking for a minute. It's a blunder. Um, yeah, it's a blunder. I think I'm going to go here and here. Now I'll go here and here.
so yeah, I think our opponent played pretty well. Uh, they were playing aggressively, and I had to be careful. And so, you, you know, I think they played pretty well. Let's check the game review real quickly. Um, so yeah, and I mean, we didn't get a chance to do the Kali like we wanted, right? Because of this E5 move, which wasn't a good move, but it did, at least it did stop what we were trying to do, right? So two times, we haven't really been able to play the Kali, but... It is what it is, and I think we played this fine. I bet it wanted to take the point. Wanted us to take the point. Yeah. So Stockfish was basically saying, "Just take the pawn." Yep. Just take everything. That's what it wanted. Which I kind of figured, but I also was like, I don't want to be greedy. I want to just play it safe. Um, but. Yeah, in hindsight, it's easy to say, like, oh, yeah, Stockfish has to take it. Anyway, guys, I wanted to get to 1375. That's what we did. Thank you guys for being here. And I'm going to go crutch my way to the uh, kitchen. For everybody who was asking, I uh, sprained my ankle really badly a couple days ago. And, um, yeah, my foot's, like, super swollen. So, anyway, see you guys. Take it easy. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.